How's it going Eliminators? Today we're going to be working on a Craftsman 22 inch walk behind trimmer. So let's get right into it. So we're working on a little walk behind trimmer here. It has a Briggs and Stratton 675 series. So this is a 6.75 pound foot of torque engine. So it's 190 cc. There's the model number of the engine as well as the model number of the actual Craftsman trimmer itself. Now you guys can see that I've already started working on it. I pulled the spark plug. It takes an RJ19 LM plug. I'm gonna be putting a new one in there. I've pulled off the air filter and they are pretty dirty. So I'm gonna be changing that. But the main issue is that the throttle control cable broke and it broke up on the top where the handle is. So we're gonna be looking to replace this. And then once we replace that, then I can go ahead and hook that back up because when I disconnected that and I just tried to move the throttle control here, uh, it did nothing. And I'm gonna show you guys that this is in what would be low RPM. There's absolutely no tension on the governor spring right here, right? So that keeps tension on your throttle butterfly valve there. And when we turn this to the high position, you're gonna notice that there's barely any tension on there either. So my customer complained that it was running at a real low RPM. So I'm assuming that they hit something. You see how the paint is chipped off here? This is very common on these style engines because people go up under like a boat trailer or something like that and they just clip that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a pair of pliers and all we're gonna do is bend that out See how it opened up our throttle now? So when you're on low RPM, right, there's gonna be a little bit of tension on that spring. And then when you go to high RPM, there's gonna be more tension on that spring. So we might have to go even more. So that's in the wide open throttle position, and then that's in the stop position. So obviously your governor, when your engine's spinning, the camshaft is pushing up against that counterweight, it's pulling this back. So the farther forward this is, the more tension it's gonna put on your throttle butterfly valve here, which means the more it's gonna open that throttle into that position. Now, worst case scenario, if I can't get that throttle cable, then my customer really doesn't need the throttle cable because you can just move this by hand and it can be a hand operated throttle control. Now, a lot of times on some of these models, you're gonna see the little red handle here and that's gonna be just that. A lot of Craftsman pressure washers have that, whereas this one has the little post here. So your cable goes in here and then just hooks up to there so that it just allows you to throttle it up or throttle it down. But like I said, you know, you can always just do this one by hand. And just to show you guys, the kill switch on this one is that little tab right there. So as you bring this over into the off position, it depresses that tab. So basically all it does is connects a ground, right? So it connects those two pieces. So it, you're just grounding out the coil and that's it. So now the engine will stop. It has spark there and it has no spark there. So it's a pretty simple design. You know, if it was my machine and I snapped the cable and I couldn't find one for a cheap price or I couldn't get one soon, I would just disconnect the cable and just run it by hand because it's no big deal. But my customer wants us to go ahead and replace the throttle control cable, do a full service on this. So I'm gonna be changing the oil, changing the air filter, the spark plug as well and I got a new RJ 19 LM spark plug here and I've gapped it to 30 thousandths of an inch so I'm gonna install that and I'm just using a 13 16 spark plug socket to tighten that up and before I run it I don't want to suck up any loose debris so I just went ahead and wiped out the inner air box and I have a brand new Stens 102 dash 549 air filter here and that replaces Briggs & Stratton 491588S. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this and then I'll bring this outside and fire it up and then I'll show you guys how to adjust the RPM. Okay, so I have here my single cylinder wireless tachometer. So how this works is you put this little coil here up to the high tension lead or the spark plug wire, and then you turn it to the on position. Now we're gonna be measuring in the low RPM position. So that goes anywhere from zero to 5,000 RPM. You guys can see on the top there. And high RPM measures from zero to 15,000 RPM. So we're gonna leave it there. And then while this machine is running, like I said, I'm just gonna go over here, press over on that, and then you'll see the gauge move up and then if we want a higher rpm like i said with this in the high rpm setting we're just going to bend this out and put more tension on this governor spring and to keep this machine running so that i don't have to hold the handle up here i just have a little quick clamp so you guys can see that on the high setting here the machine's running at a low rpm so like i said we're just going to come up to this little bracket here and pull it out and then to check it we're just going to go up here you can see we're 
at about 3,000 RPM right now. So we're going to come out just a little bit more. So we set it to approximately 3,200 RPM. I'm gonna check the spec just to make sure that this engine is supposed to be at around 3,200 RPM. And if you guys wanna know how to find your idle speed for your particular engine, just go to Google and type in let's say Briggs & Stratton 675 series idle speed and you should get a spec. Now on the Briggs & Stratton manual, it says that you wanna set this engine to 1,750 RPM on low idle speed. So here's your off position. So you would take it to the low idle setting and then you would set your machine to 1750 there. Normally I like to set them on high RPM because when it's on low RPM, they always have a chance to flutter a little bit. There's a little bit of uh, surging in the RPM. So just so you guys can see, that's low RPM. And you see what I mean about the little bit of like a rough idle? They run better at high RPM. So when it's at a higher RPM, it's a much more stable RPM and then I can get a better reading. And like I said, if it was a little bit bigger of an engine, I'd probably set it to about 3600 RPM. For this particular engine, I set the high RPM to approximately 3200 RPM. Another thing I could mention about these engines is that if you ever try to start one and it doesn't start and you know your carburetor is good and you know everything else is good, if you pull off your cap and you have spark when you're testing it with a spark tester, go ahead and remove this little heat shield here. A lot of times these press against the spark plug base and they don't actually allow you to get a good connection in between the rubber cap that connects to your high tension lead. So a lot of times these just prevent spark from going to the spark plug. And when you test it, a lot of the testers have a longer probe and uh, they can go farther in here. So you'll get spark when you test them, but you won't get spark when it's hooked up to the spark plug. But I'm gonna go ahead and let this thing warm up and then I can go ahead and drain the oil. But these things are perfect for trimming areas like this in behind my shed here, where there's not a whole lot of room. Yeah, these things work awesome guys just for spots like that that are hard to get into but overgrow sometimes so now that it's nice and warm i'm going to go ahead and use my pella oil extractor and we're going to pump out some of that oil there yeah this thing's definitely one of the best things that i've purchased in terms of like shop tools you just take your tube and you put it into the bottom end down the dipstick there go ahead and pump it up 20 times and then you should hear the oil flowing you guys can see it's pretty dirty i use this thing multiple times a day but there you go as soon as it starts sucking air like that, you can just fish this around in there. And if you want, you can even tilt your machine to the side a little bit to help it suck up a little bit more. Now you don't wanna pump this thing more than 20 times because it could collapse on itself because what you're doing is pumping the air out of that chamber and it's sucking in the fluid to replace it. But sooner or later, we should start hearing air. Right there, guys. So that's it. All of the oil is out of the bottom end of this machine. And then what I'll do is fill this up with approximately 20 ounces of SAE 30 engine oil. For doing small engine repair, you really can't beat these things. Then you just go ahead and hook up your spout and you can dump it into your used oil container. Pop off the pump right there. And that's it guys. Oil change done simple. Okay, so we got 20 ounces of 10W30 into this engine, and the cable for this particular model is a Stenz 290-747, and that's a 32 and a half inch cable. And this throttle control just bolts up to the handle right there. So I'll go ahead and fire that up and show you guys how that works. That's it, guys. 
So this unit is ready to be returned back to my customer. It's fully serviced and ready to go. So that's it for today's video. We were able to get the throttle cable replaced on that trimmer, new air filter. I also put a pre-filter on it as well. And as always guys, part numbers for everything that I use in my videos are gonna be down in the description down below. If you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to stop on by next week, check the channel out for new content, and as always, guys, thanks for watching.